All right, another episode uh, from Lizard Landscapes. This project, we got sort of a fake tree instead of fake rock. Uh, perfect for geckos and tarantulas, Vietnamese centipedes, uh, small snakes, obviously the tree frog. Um, built with the exact same techniques, same materials, but really just a, a aesthetic decision to make a tree. Obviously, you could go out into the forest and find a real tree and hollow it out and uh, sanitize it, but the benefit to doing this is it's going to be exactly the right height, the right width, that type of thing. So, a little bit of a different project here. Let's get started. Anyway, if you haven't done this before, you want to wear one of these little masks protects you from the dust. What I did was create a little crude drawing to go by. Measured out on a piece of polystyrene the length that I wanted to do and the width. And cutting out sort of a awkward looking oval shape for the base of the tree. And I'm gonna start cutting out these little rectangles. Try to build up the structure in sort of a igloo type style. Using a product uh, similar to liquid nails to glue, you can use regular glue. Uh, liquid nails just holds quicker, allows you to progress faster. So working on the second layer here and trying to angle this layer inward um, so that the shape of the tree doesn't just go up straight. Uh, you can see here what I've got. I've got the base propped up on a couple of jars of sand. I could have used uh, like a soup can or paint can. Anything to get it elevated to where it's actually going to be once the structure is finished. Uh, sculpting out the roots here. So you can see the benefit here gluing this uh, first root, the main root, on here. That's exactly where it'll be as far as its height. So the root uh, will dry perfectly as far as the position of the peas. Just continuing to build up the actual trunk, trying to make it look like, you know, the tree had fallen over and it's been splintered at some point. Now building the entrance to the tree here, trying to make it look as natural as possible. You want to try to eliminate as many straight lines as humanly possible. Just creating another root, and really it's just a process of shaving off uh, thinner, smaller pieces of polystyrene so that you can build up the structure to make it look more organic. All right, see it there? It's got a few legs to it being held up by those jars of sand. Putting on another leg here, you can see I'm trying to create uh, some more curved shapes to it. Just increase the look of uh, it being natural. Anyway, gluing together uh, three thinner pieces ran out of the uh, thick stuff. So, but just to show you, you can still keep uh, doing the same process of a thicker piece carving into it because all I did was glue together three uh, thinner pieces just trying to match the thickness of the other roots so it's ending up looking more like a swamp tree than anything else look at some uh, pictures of either swamp trees or trees or do a search for tree roots Filling in some gaps here that the uh, igloo technique sort of creates. 
and we've got these little corner wedges to uh, offset how flat the base looks. And you can sort of pick at it, dig away at it, and uh, trying to make it look more natural, more organic, more weathered, that type of thing. Adding another root here. And now's the fun grouting stage. Mixing together uh, non-sanded grout and water. And this is uh, a little bit of a sloppy mess, if you just to be forewarned. So I've got the first layer here. It doesn't really matter what color the first or second layer is. So this is like a off beige or something. Second layer, different color, just so I can uh, figure out where I've been if I get called away from it. Third layer, I ended up putting, uh, I'm using some brown cement color. I could have used acrylic brown. I just had some leftover uh, cement color. But it gives a really good color, really strong, so you don't have to put that much in. Wanting the last layer to be color of brown, this is a tree, but obviously it could have been black or white. Mixing together some really thick grout. Uh, I'm going to put on uh, a layer in certain areas that will later be uh, carved into to uh, give the impression of bark. Oh, it's like applying frosting here. And you just let it dry for maybe five minutes. And go back into it with a knife and you can Depending on how much time you take, you can get a halfway decent looking realistic bark look. And creating a little bit of texture here. So you can really see the difference there between one side that's treated, the other side doesn't have any bark. Could have left it without the bark. But uh, just to show you how much detail you can put into this. Not putting as much time and effort into the, this will end up being the back side, not as uh, visible as the other side in the cage it's going to go in. But still uh, somewhat effective. Now this is something you want to do to break off uh, some of the weaker, sharp parts that uh, happen from this thicker grout, just sort of breaking it off with my thumb. A better way of doing this is taking some fine grit uh, sandpaper and going over it and get rid of the sharp parts, but it ends up giving this sort of rounded, weathered, old bark look. A little bit more work involved there. And now we have to seal it. I end up putting uh, four to five coats of uh, this non-toxic acrylic sealer called Shields All. And then uh, when I'm, I've got the last layer and it hasn't dried yet. I'm going to sprinkle some brown colored sand on top of it. Just using a spoon here, kind of getting an even coat. And you can put some different colors like black to add detail. And you can even put some fake moss in there. Just sort of scraping some of it away with a screwdriver. So there you have it. Petrified tree for your gecko, tarantula, little snake, Vietnamese centipede tree frog. The list goes on.